All right, guys. Today we're out in the uh, <laughs> out in the yard and the wind, uh, taking a look at my solar uh, landscape lighting. Now, when I say that, most of you are probably thinking of these little uh, plastic solar lights with the built-in solar panel on top, a little single LED and built-in battery. And anybody who's used these for any length of time knows not only how cheap they are, but that they just don't work. So when I say solar landscape lighting, what I'm really talking about is solar powered professional landscape lighting. So if you've got something like an entire yard of landscape lights, up lights and trees, path lights, or even like a subdivision entrance sign, uh, a garden somewhere, things like that, that you want to put landscape lighting uh, around the property or to light specific areas, but you want something that's going to be reliable and work consistently. For most people, this is a wired uh, landscape light, something along the lines of one of these, this is a brass fixture. It's going to last a really long time. The bulbs are replaceable. Uh, you can put, of course, LED bulbs in here, which is kind of a must for this. But you're not getting away from the wire. A lot of people choose these solar landscape lights because they want something that just sticks in the ground and they move on and, and that's it. They consider that, uh, you know, done. And that's never going to be the case, primarily because when you've got a landscape light, the ideal place for a landscape light is 90% of the time going to be somewhere where it's the worst place for a solar panel to, to gather lighting, such as under a, a really shady tree, tucked away in, in some ornamental grasses or something. That's, that's the exact place where you want the light and don't want your solar panel. So you're not getting away from the wire. Uh, you're going to need to put the solar panel somewhere that isn't where the light is. And what that means is that you don't really need anything special. There are a lot of companies out there that make uh, residential and professional landscape lights that are like a single light or a two or three light system with one solar panel and then there's a wire that goes out like 15, 16 feet to, to connect them. And that's great, but it limits you to their system, their single light and whatever controls, if any, they have in there. Another big problem with with normal solar lights, like you see lining people's driveways, known as the, the good little soldier look, or just scattered, you know, 40 of them in someone's front yard looking like uh, little pinpricks in a starry night sky. Those are basically just a battery and a photo cell that is, has no brains, no anything. It charges up during the day and it is different levels of brightness depending on how much sun it got, and it runs different lengths of time. Uh, there's no consistency to it, there's no reliability to it, and it just drains the battery essentially every night, which means that after like a season or two of use, the batteries in them are shot and either need to be replaced or the whole fixture has to be scrapped. So, what I've done here is I have actually put in a 180 watt uh, solar panel. This is on a mount essentially for a satellite dish. And it has a, an enclosure below this that's an outdoor rated enclosure that contains my batteries and then a solar charge controller. And that's essentially it, other than your fuses and things like that. There's really not much to this system. Batteries, controller, and solar panel. Uh, this solar panel produces way more power than I need and it is regulated down uh, by the charge controller. The great thing with that is, is that it means even on super overcast rainy days, I can pretty much fill my batteries as much as I would ever need. And I'm running 
north of probably 20 landscape lights around the property all off this one system. Now mine run for about five hours, six hours a day, uh, and then they're, they're timed so they, when the sun goes down, they come on five or six hours later, they turn off automatically. Um, I have standard uh, sealed lead acid batteries that are a, a solar type battery, but they're a, a sealed lead acid battery, not lithium. And I have uh, 70 amp hours worth of battery. I've got 235 amp hour batteries in here. What that means is since they're lead acid, I can only really use about half of the, the current on them. And that means that to get two or three days of, of run on them, which you kind of want that redundancy of two to three days without sun before it, you know, will we'll start running down. Um, that's the reason I had to put these, these size of battery in. With something like a lithium, you can drain it down a lot farther. You can use more of the battery. And so you could actually get away with a smaller battery or longer run time on the, the same amount of batteries. So with a system like this, you basically install it exactly like a hardwired landscape lighting system. And that's the big deal here is knowing who a system like this is for. If you've got a plug nearby and you can put a standard landscape lighting transformer in to connect your wired lights, if you're doing something like this to save money on electricity, don't do it, it's not for you. This is not cheaper than just putting a transformer in, the payback is never there. This is for someone or like a neighborhood, something, if you've got a remote area that's not easy to get electricity to, the cost of running electricity to that location, like if you've got a long driveway with a, a larger entrance gate or something, or if you're a subdivision with an entrance sign, it actually can be cheaper to put a system like this in, uh, even for just a few years, than to have a meter put in, like an electric meter and the power run in by the power company to that sign, just for a few lights. Uh, that, the cost of that essentially, you then have to pay your electric bill. And with a system like that too, there's a grid connection fee that never goes away. Even if you're only using a fraction of the electricity, you've still got like, you know, $20, $30 plus per month just to be connected to the electricity grid. And so after a few years, even if you have to replace the batteries in something like this, you're, you're still coming out ahead because you're not paying for electricity, you're not paying for that grid connection fee. You had the initial outlay of the system and that was it. Uh, a big thing, the deciding factor on that too, is going to be if you can do it yourself or if you have to hire a company. Because companies have to, have to warranty things, they have to make them indestructible, they have to generally use more expensive parts for things so that they know that they won't have to maintain them as much. Versus if you do something yourself, uh, you kind of can make trade-offs that you know and accept and, and things. So with a system like this, that with a, a panel like this, you don't even need something this size. You can get away with a panel half this size, especially if you're only running like five or six lights, which is more than enough for an entrance. A lot of like subdivision entrances will have one or two lights per side on a sign, uh, and that is basically it. So with something like this, you can power basically an entire front of a subdivision worth of lights and still have plenty of, of solar to spare. A whole system like this is going to cost you a few hundred dollars uh, to get in if you're building it yourself. If you're hiring a company, you're probably looking at a thousand or two depending. But the real benefit of it is that you can then use essentially any like LED landscape light that you want and you just connect it in, any standard 12 volt light. So a standard 12 volt light is actually AC. Most landscape lights are 12 to 15 volts AC. They just have a transformer 
and that transformer is converting from your 120 volt uh, like wall outlet power down to to that lower voltage and then sending it out. Uh, higher end, like the commercial transformers, are going to have uh, like a 12 volt and then maybe a 14, a 15, something like that for longer runs. So you run a higher voltage if you've got if you know you've got to go a long way with your wire. But the 12 volt AC lights that are LEDs inherently can run on DC. Uh, you know, there really is no AC LED. They're, they're all DC and they either have like a full bridge rectifier in them or they're, they're using the LEDs on the cheaper ones sometimes as, a, as part of the rectifier. But either way, they basically are designed to convert that DC or that AC into DC for the LED. So if you run DC straight through, you, you get a little bit higher voltage um, and that's a concern for some, but in, the, in most cases, the, the bulbs are designed to handle that. Uh, if it concerns you, you can find uh, landscape lighting bulbs that basically say 12 volt AC slash DC. So they will work with pretty much anything. And what this means is that you don't need any fancy inverters or special technology and stuff to do something like this. You can run your standard hardwired landscape lighting directly off a 12 volt battery. Now, I've got a Victron uh, solar charge controller in here and they have modes built into them. They're a little more expensive than some of them from like Renogy and some of the Bouge RV stuff, uh, but they have everything built in that you would need for doing landscape lighting right off the bat. Um, they have essentially what are like street light modes where it will turn a load output on. So everything connects in. You connect your battery into the charge controller, your solar panel into it, and then the landscape lighting actually connects into the a dedicated output on the, the charge controller. And this means that the charge controller can be programmed, hey, when the sun goes down and you stop uh, getting power, turn the lighting on and keep it on for this many hours or keep it on until you sense uh, the sun come up again or in the case of some of these you can actually turn it uh, to where it comes on when the sun goes down is on for like four or five hours and then is off during the very middle of the night and it will actually come back on the next morning before the sun comes up for a few hours and then turn off again so if you want, say, your house or something to have landscape lighting that's on when people would be driving by or using the space or anything like that, but you don't need it at three in the morning, you can actually set that and configure that in, in like the Victron controllers as well. Uh, another big thing with some of these controllers like the Victrons is that you, it, it is smart enough, it has a battery saver so that if the lights are on, let's say, programmed for five hours or even all night, uh, every single day, and you just have two weeks of like nothing but rain and clouds, and you're not charging the battery up, instead of it continuously running the battery down, it will start uh, after a few days to actually reduce the amount of time the lights are on and see if it can get the battery back up with that reduced and then it'll automatically put it back to your program or eventually it can just turn them off so that it doesn't kill your battery permanently and, and damage things. Uh, you can get a lot longer runtime with things like lithium batteries. You just have to make sure, are they in a space that is conducive? Like if it's in the bright sun, are you getting enough uh, cooling in there that you're not overheating the batteries? Um, if you are in a, an area with hard winters and things, you might have to use self-heating lithium batteries or have a small uh, heating pad essentially in your battery enclosure. And this can be where if you're not comfortable with this kind of thing, uh, where companies that do dedicated systems actually come into place. Now there are some companies like Volt Lighting um, who makes a lot of my landscape lights that I use and they had a system that I, I think was recently discontinued that was a dedicated solar panel with 
uh, three really nice like brass light fixtures that were wired and it used replaceable uh, like 18650 lithium ion cells. Um, there are a couple professional companies out there using lithium iron phosphate batteries that have really good like 10 year battery life even if they're drained every day. Uh, but you don't have to do one of these. You can get these professional systems. There's even a few uh, subdivisions in, in my area that have dedicated solar lights uh, that are usually one panel for one light or one panel for two lights, but they are running the whole entrance sign off of solar. So this is definitely something that you can do if you've got a, a powered gate opener uh, like on your property. Uh, it might be something that you can share the usage of putting a bigger panel in in a good sunny spot and having it simultaneously charge your, your gate opener batteries and all of the lights that you have uh, at your entrance gate. So know that just because something says it's a solar light does not mean that it's good in the same way as not all solar lights are bad junk little things with, uh, with tiny solar panels on the top. And you can actually combine uh, the best of both worlds. Re the reliability of a hardwired nice system that functions day in and day out uh, with the remote operability of a of a solar panel with with zero electricity bill uh, and depending on how it's done you know minimal minimal maintenance this one has been in operation for over a year now and we are a high wind area risk of hurricanes and things and it's just one single uh, steel pole in the ground that pretty much anyone could set up and do. And it, we haven't noticed an issue with it at all. Uh, again, parts on this are universal in general. Uh, the controller is not proprietary. The batteries are not proprietary. The panel itself is not proprietary. So if anything happens, if we damage a panel or anything, it's a fraction of the cost to just put a new one on and, and keep it running and repairing for, for years to come. Uh, so, you know, take a look at, uh, at high-end solar systems or, or the parts to build them yourself if you think this is a, a good route that you wanna go down because there's a huge difference in the quality of these little cheap plastic lights and a nice brass or, or aluminum fixture. Just wanted to share this with you guys and uh, let you know how my system was working and kind of what's out there. I will see you guys in the next one.